how you pronounce it? Gantt charts um, for Microsoft Project and Microsoft Excel. And, I, and uh, as I was working on this project, I realized, huh, this fits in, in some of the topics we're talking about, specifically visualization. Even if we chronicle graphics, chronicle talking about um, a passage of time or just a, a, the, telling the story of a passage of time, and graphics, visual images. So it's using visual images to tell the story of a passage of time. What Gantt charts are so useful? Um, has anyone taken system analysis and design? Brother Bakken teaches it. You work in teams. At the end, end of the year, uh, the, I guess the semester, you do a project where you, um, you know, create a fake software and you talk about the planning and how much it's going to cost. And one of the things is create a Gantt chart. You got to decide how long this project's going to take. And um, while I was researching, someone on when I was talking, when I was uh, reading about um, software design, some described um, software design as kind of like juggling. You have like dozens of balls you're juggling, and dropping one can just cause the whole thing to fall apart. There's so many things to, to consider when trying to plan out how you're going to create a piece of software. There's who's going to work on it, how many people, how long, what are the milestones, what are the deadlines. There's just a lot of things. And especially if you're trying to like show other people what the idea is, it can be difficult. That's why Gantt charts are so useful, because they show in a quick visual image the basic outline and the status of a project. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a few Gantt charts I've created using this visualization software, both in Microsoft Project and Excel. So let's start with Project. So just looking at this, this isn't fun to look at at all, is it? The text is small, there's a lot of dates. You know, okay, I see planning phase, I see create working plans, I see phase two. But really just, it, you would take a while to look at this to gain an understanding of what this project is and what it, where it is at and how long it's gonna take. So that's why I'm going to use One Pager Pro, which will grab all of the information, or at least the information I tell it to grab, and it's gonna make a chart out of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open one I just created for it before I got up here. I'll load up. I might have to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. So that's a little bit easier to read. It still will take a little bit of explanation, but that's why you have a presenter. That's why you have someone leading the project explaining where we are in this project and what we're doing. So. Um, you can tell just by the color scheme and just how the page flows. You realize, okay, we're up, this is where we start, and this is where we're going, down here on the right. These are the early tasks, these are the late tasks. And the legend can help you a lot. These yellow bars tell you how far we are along in certain parts. So by glancing at that, you can tell, oh, in this project, we're already, we're pretty good on the planning phase. In fact, this dotted blue line shows the exact date. This is, this is a two-year-old project, so this isn't current, but... You can see where they are, and compared to how, you know, how much is complete on each one. These little lines are baselines. These were the original days we wanted to start and we wanted to finish. So you can tell this project has been taking longer than hoped for, and that has been reworked. Um, let's see what else about this. You can tell that down here is a milestone. It's a different symbol. That's that is the goal. You can have several milestones in a project. But this one only has one milestone, is to deliver the product to make it available uh, by the end of the third quarter of 2014. Um, any questions on this so far? Do you guys feel like this is useful? Or, no, it's kind of a broad question. Sure. So you can use this on Excel and on Project? In Project, that's correct. So you've got several color codes there. I get the prime and subcontractor that's uh, kind of contracting relationships. Team one and team two, are they part of prime or part of subcontractor? And uh, that's that's a really good point because sometimes there's so much information on here. So let me go back to the prop this file just for a second. Let's see. Uh, team one and team two. Let's try to figure out what they're up to. Uh, looks like we have an engineering team. Oh, engineering team one and engineering team two. Engineering Team 1 works on. So there's all these different things that Engineering Team 1 does, but we're not putting every single one or just an absolutely huge, hard-to-read graph. 
Um, so some of them are working on things like plate movement, rotator barrier. So they're building something like a plane, I believe, or a spaceship, I believe. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can change anything about this graph. Anything about this graph is customizable. That's another reason why this tool is really popular. We can change the colors, we can change the shapes, we can put in images, we can change anything. So maybe we can just say this is, change this to, how do you spell engineering? E-N-G-I-N. Everyone said that's the same time. E-N-G-I-N. I think it's so team. team. There you go, that works. Let's go, Eng team. And so, <laughs> and see, engineering team is in the orange. And so we can, we can even add like, we can change the name of this, because right now it says engineering team on development. We can add a comment saying, on track, need more funding. <laughs> or something always, like that. always need more. But, and we can change, maybe we really want someone to see this, so we'll put a big old X, and we'll make it red, or darker. And so, and there's this, I, I mean, you can play around this, and make this, use this data, and switch it around any way you want. It's highly customizable. Let's look, um, I guess we can either look at some more project files, or we can jump to Excel, but let's, let's try, just try looking at it. Let's grab one of these sample files I have for project and see if we can make it work. Um, let's try. Let's try. Let's try. TD Ameritrade. Anybody see that? TD Ameritrade. Okay. TD Ameritrade. Okay. See, they have project one, project two. So this is a several project project. And that's another thing about great about one pager pro is that we can use multiple files, even multiple uh, project files, and we can kind of string them together and show what's most important. So I'm going to change the template from a single project to a multi-project template. Let's just go see, let's just see what happens when I use the default settings on that, see what it makes. So it's grabbing, it's cool, it's grabbing all of that information you have in your project file, and it's going to try to graph it to the best of its ability. You might have to customize some things, but, yeah, we, you would definitely have to mess that's with the template with that yeah, one. Lots of generic tasks. Lots of that. generic tasks. And that's saying that was just a sample file. This one was just to try to, this was for my purposes for testing the software, because I'm a software tester there, to see if it can handle multiple projects. While it's not, why you would have more descriptive names in the real world, if there is several different projects there. Um, let's jump to Excel. Excel's just, more people are familiar with Excel. Um, this is one I was working on before I came up here. This one is Project Falcon. Um, and I think it's the soft, the developing software for this one. So, I was working on this one. Again, the color scheme helps you really uh, tell the difference between different sections of the project. Over here on the left, you see we have the project phase. Inception, design, construction, transition, and then you can even see like the sub-teams, the resources being used. The sales team is working on this one, but the engineering team is this one, management team is this one, and there's a milestone for, there's several milestones here. We have a checkpoint, another checkpoint. So, any questions? One, uh, one question with visualization, it almost seems like it would be maybe more uh, more intuitive for the reader to, or it depends on the kind of analysis sequence you expect the reader to take, but uh, when you listed out the, the, the teams, I would almost prefer to see the colors representing the different teams be because the sections are already defined by their flow. Okay. And you've got lines, you could just bold those lines in between to kind of mark the difference between phases a little bit more. Okay. To demarcate those and then. Well, okay, we, we can have, start with that. Have we a can difference grab, in color that way. I don't know. You can make the borders bigger, darker, line width. You can make black. For starters. 
Yeah. That separates a little bit more. Uh -huh. But you said, well, what else did you say? We can, we can. Um, have the color coding of the taskbars be coded by the team that's doing it rather than by the activity that you're in. Table rows by. Resource. Resource. No, wait, no, it's already. Okay, so we've got project. Resources. That's the name of your teams. That's the name of the teams. So let's do. Uh, to change this to resources. Let's get rid of that. So now we have a sales team, engineering team, engineering team, project management team. Now we're just looking at each team and the things they're in charge of. So we've kind of 